Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. And where if you follow along regularly on our channel, you've probably seen me using a different vac that I haven't really shown you that I'll show you right now. Really fine build. Um, just the, the best craftsmanship. And let me get that one out of the way and set this one up here for you. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that was it, didn't you? This is the No Kill Honeybee Vacuum by John Nelson of BB Nelson Apiaries. He sent this to me probably, I don't want to say about a year ago. I told him initially that I wouldn't even use it because it was too pretty and I didn't want to scratch it up. Just the finest craftsmanship that you could find anywhere. I don't think you'll ever find another bee vac that's built so pretty, so nice. I'm going to take a few minutes and show this thing to you and so that you're not distracted by the construction projects in the back of my truck. Let me cover up the trash. <laughs> this is really just a beautiful vac. I mean, I've been using it as dirty. Uh, you know, these things are all shiny and, and new when you get it. But I've scratched it, I've dented it, stuff like that. Jeez, man, kill me. Because every time I scratch or dent it, I know it and I know I did it and it just I'm like man it's just putting scars I guess you could call it character on it but I hate to mess it up it's just so nice if you look at the bottom of it those old pads they look like those old stereo cabinets and stuff I'm gonna split it real quick show you what's inside of it you can see what's on top of it it's a bucket head back it's corded powered the outlet as you can see where it blows on the box of course is right here the original hose inlet is corked and then the inside of the box has a screen separating the motor and you've seen this part before I've shown this on a few videos you got the screen side you got the motor side it does have a filter uh, you know bees can't get into this side when it's all put together they're housed in that brought in through your vac hose connection here you got regulation of your vac pressure here i'll show you how to empty this in just a second before i get to that i'll just show you again a brief glimpse of the craftsmanship and it's dirty of course it's been used it's been used on several jobs uh the the filter right here it's got a foam filter on the motor I've, I've unscrewed this plate right here, taken that filter out and cleaned it a few times, a couple times. The screen side is built just with incredibly tight tolerances. It really fits well and all the latches are aligned properly. So when you're emptying this, you just pop the latch on either side and you leave the top latch closed. There's no latch on the bottom for the screen side. You'll hang it over your box where you're going to empty it. And you'll pull the bottom of the screen out. Usually there'll be bees clustered up on the screen. And you can just bump them off, you know, bump them on the bucket. I don't like bumping it because I'm just trying not to beat the thing up. A few of the features that I really like on this vac, or one of them is the weight. I don't know exactly what it weighs, but both sides together are probably less than 10 pounds if i had to guess very lightweight build you know right off the bat you can see just the craftsmanship so the way it looks is just incredible he's used some pretty nice hardware on it and everything is tight and in alignment i haven't had to re-screw or adjust anything it's all just been just like it was set up uh, this right here is a strap to hang it off your ladder works really well uh, unless you're in tight spaces, then you, you know, sometimes it won't fit up there with you. But the shorter of a hose that you can use on a BVAC, on any BVAC, will reduce your losses. So if you can get away with it and hang it up there with you where you work, you're better off. Now, I can't always, or for one reason or another, don't want to. So sometimes you'll see me using these junk uh, taped together hoses. Those are no reflection on on this vac or anybody else's because that's not what was sent to me that's just something i put together now the hoses that i use with this uh one of them is that orange one there the other one i just bought is a seven foot 
the hose that he sent with it i have no clue i think somebody made off with it because we had three people doing cutouts at one time and i think somebody else got my hose and i never have been able to find it and i went on sears to try to order the one he had and i didn't see it so i just went to to the depot and got that one but that's nothing hoses is not what you're here to see uh, but again the shorter the back hose the more bees you're going to save the longer the hose the more tumbling the more beat up they get coming into the back now as i'm shooting this video i'm sure there's things that are escaping my memory as as to points that i like about this vac it's a great vac i've had zero trouble with it and i want to show you one more thing These vacs are numbered, dated, and signed, and I think that's just pretty cool. I like stuff personalized. Now, if you want one of these vacs, you can contact John. I'll put his information in the description below. Beautiful vac. Need I say more? I mean, you've seen it. It's incredible. And before we sign off on this video, I want to show you one technique that John and I both do similar with a little twist. I'm going to call it the Nelson method. I call it the BB Nelson method. When you've got bees in a vac for a long period of time, any vac, not just this one, especially if the vac is running for maybe, maybe you're vacuuming for two hours straight. That's not uncommon. Bees, like people, need something to drink. So you ride a motorcycle for two hours straight, your mouth's dry, you want something to drink. Bees are the same way. When you're done with your job and you separate the cages, I almost always sprinkle water across the bees they'll be on the screen you'll see them trying to lick through and i'll just take a water bottle and just kind of throw water at them and with some of my other vacs not so much with this one because i'll actually stick my hose in my wash water just for a second just to suck some water up in there it does two things it takes care of the thirst issue and it washes out some of the honey and the sticky in the hose when you've been vacuuming for a few hours and you've had them on the road and they're in your car beating around and things like that when you go to remove them from that vac most of the time they're pretty pissed at you and they're going to try to tag you what a lot of people do and what i do sometimes is i'll spray sugar water on them most of the time i'll have a water bottle just kind of spray them down give them something to drink get them cooled off a little bit now the twist is when you're hiving the bees out of the vac john does is he uses cold water in a spray bottle so if you get water straight out of the, the fridge at the convenience store dump in your spray bottle, spritz them down. It makes them cluster up real tight. So they may still want to sting you, but they want to get warm even worse. So instead of coming after you, they're busy clustering up for warmth. And I've tried it several times. It does work really well. Take your spray bottle and open your screen, dump them, and you're done. Simple as that. Now this is not a sponsored video. And there's nobody here holding a gun to my head. So don't come in the comments later on and ask me, yeah, but what did you really think? <laughs> I'm telling you what I really think. That is a nice vac. Contact John if you want one. That's it. TC, you know I'm trying to shoot a video. Would you be quiet? <laughs>